Thank you. I will build a wall. I will build a wall. It'll be a great wall. And if I'm president, we have to do one thing at a time. We can't be fighting ISIS and fighting Assad. Assad is fighting ISIS. He's fighting ISIS. Russia's fighting now ISIS. Assad is fighting ISIS. He's fighting ISIS. Assad is fighting ISIS. We have to do one thing at a time. We can't be fighting ISIS. He's fighting ISIS. But we can't be fighting Assad. We have a country or we don't have a country. But we can't be fighting everybody at one time. Christine. I would not talk to Vladimir Putin. In fact, I would talk to Vladimir Putin a lot. And I'd say to him, listen, Mr. President, and I'd say to him, you have a friend again, sir. I completely agree with Chris. And um, this administration has been so lax. Think about it. Think about it. I will lead this country in a way that will create greater security and greater safety. Governor Bush, nobody cares. <laughs> Governor Bush, nobody cares. Governor Bush, you respect what I say. Nobody cares. Guess what? You know what a leader does? A leader brings people together to solve problems. In my opinion, nobody cares. This is Donald Trump. Remember, the buck starts here, and you're this is Donald Trump telling you to think big. I'm Donald Trump. This is Donald. This is Donald Trump. I've got people to, I, you know, I'm not exactly crazy about having to tell you. What, so, you know, let's get well. well uh, This is Donald Trump telling, oops, you're fired. Got it. That was a tough one. Hey, yeah, yeah. Is this it? I'm Donald Trump reminding, oops. Listen, repealing Obamacare is not going to be easy. Passing a simple flat tax and abolishing the IRS is not going to be easy. But if we stand with the American people, we can do it. Dr. Carson, Dr. Carson. Uh, thank you for including me in the debate. Governor Bush, I want to... Yes, yeah. You have said legal, illegal immigrants, quote, broke the law. What does that mean to you, and how does that inform First, your I approach feel like to I... immigration reform? Great question. Jip is a mess. Jeb Bush is the weakest person on the stage by far. Jeb is a waste, and everybody knows it. He is so weak, it's laughable. Jeb is a mess. <laughs> Jeb is a waste. <laughs> Jeb is a mess. <laughs> Jeb is a big, fat mistake. I gotta tell you, this is just crazy, huh? This is just nuts, okay? Jeez, oh man. Jeez, oh man. You know, this, this, this is the standard operating procedure to disparage me. That's fine. I don't know. No, excuse me, Jeb. Jeb is a big fat mess. Okay, Governor uh, Bush, I'd like now, to I gotta you. respond to this. The reason why I should be president is. Great question. The reason why I should be president, I feel like I have to, um... Excuse me, two days ago he said, 
he would take his pants off and moon everybody. Nasty guy. He's a nasty guy. Jeb is a nasty guy. I want to tell you, I don't often agree with Marco, and I don't often agree with Ted, but I get along with everybody. But I say this every night, every day, every afternoon, and it's so true. Jeb is a mess. Jeb is a waste. Jeb is a big fat mess. Welcome back to the University of Houston and the Republican presidential debate. The candidates, they are now in place. We'd also like to welcome a very special guest with us, the 41st president of the United States, George Herbert Walker Bush and former first lady Barbara Bush. Mr. Trump. I'm a negotiator. I've done very well over the years. In all fairness, Marco is not a negotiator. I watched him melt down, and I'll tell you, it was one of the saddest things I've ever seen. It was one of the saddest things I've ever seen. It was one of the saddest, one of the saddest things I've ever seen. Now he's repeating himself. No, Mr. I'm Trump. not repeating. No, no, no. Mr. Trump. All of you want to repeal and replace Obamacare, so let's talk about your plans, specific plans, to replace it. Mr. Trump. I do not want socialized medicine. Let's talk about the economy. Let, Wolf, let's talk Wolf, about the economy. Wolf, does everyone get to address Obama, Obamacare but me? I want to move on, but there'll be plenty of opportunities for you to address. We, we, it, your, it's your, kind your of an issue. issue I have a long history with. I know you do. It, and, all right, go ahead. Go ahead. Go Donald. ahead. Don't get nervous. My, go ahead. Uh, <laughs> my name I promise is, you, Donald. There's is, nothing about I've you that, you. that I've makes I've anyone nervous. You know, so people are actually watching this. I don't worry about it. Mr. Trump, nobody knows politicians better than I do. I am sick and tired of him going after my family. My dad is the greatest man alive in my mind. And while, while Donald Trump was building a reality TV show, my brother was building a security apparatus to keep us safe, and I'm proud of what he did. Let me, let me, just, say, let me just say this. Look, Jeb is a mess. Jeb is a waste. Jeff is a mess. My mom is the strongest woman I know. Chris, thank you very much. I appreciate it. This has been an amazing evening. Uh, we're going to make America great again, folks. We're going to make it great again. And, you know, I watched Hillary's speech, and she wants to make America whole again. And I'm trying to figure out what is that all about. Make America great again is going to be much better than making America whole again. I have thousands of people that work for me right now that are Hispanic. I've had thousands and 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 thousands. Those people were so incredible to me. And I'm going to do great with the Hispanics. I'm Hispanic and I first work with the tribe. We're going to do great with the African Americans. I'm a businessman. I know how to do this. I am a truth teller and I will tell the truth, okay? Our infrastructure is going to hell. Our roads are going to hell. Our highways are going to hell. Our schools, our hospitals, our airports are going to hell. And the trade deficits at $400 billion and $500 billion, six or seven or eight or nine. And frankly, I think that's fine. As far as I'm concerned, it's fine. And I get along great with the Hispanics you saw.
You can't talk. You know these politicians? All talk, no action. You got to be able to win something. And, you know, I have thousands of employees all over the country, actually all over the world. But for purposes of tonight, we'll just say all over the country. It's been amazing to have so many wonderful employees, some of whom are here tonight. And uh, just uh, so beautiful to watch this company grow and to watch it grow so strongly. Uh, recent articles came out talking about how great a company we built. Sit down and shut up. 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 Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Tonight, there are just four candidates on the stage. Here they are. Businessman Donald Trump. Texas Senator Ted Cruz. Florida Senator Marco Rubio. And Ohio Governor John Kasich. Senator Rubio. What happened in Flint was a terrible thing. It was a systemic, systemic breakdown at every level of government, at both the federal and partially the, the, at both the, the state. Excuse me. Excuse me. The real con artist is Senator Marco Rubio, this little guy. I keep hearing that he's the only one that can beat me. But he's getting beaten very, very badly. So where does this come from? Where does it come from? CNN just came out with a poll two days ago. That a national poll. Excuse me. A national poll. A national poll. Excuse me. Excuse me. Donald Trump in 2008 wrote four checks to elect Hillary Clinton as president. And that was because of the fact that I'm in business. I did support very heavily Ronald Reagan. I also supported George Bush, by the way. All right, Mr. Mr. Trump. But but what would you well, say? Stand by, Mr. Clinton, on the stand by Senator Cruz. When you wrote her a check in 2008, wrote her four checks. L let me tell you something, Ted. Ted is a mess. You have to be able to have some flexibility, some negotiation. Let me point out. I understand the folks who are supporting Donald right now. You're angry. You're angry at Washington, and he uses angry rhetoric. Ted is a mess. This little guy is a waste. I also happen to call him a lightweight, okay? And I have said that, so I would like to take that back. He's really not that much of a lightweight. This little guy is a mess. Learn, let me take a moment, Chris, to go back to this exchange that was going on. I've rolled out a detailed plan to cut $500 billion in federal spending, specifying exactly what I would Excuse cut. me. Go ahead, Mr. Trump. Floor is yours. Ted is a mess. This little guy is a waste. Let's stop fighting. Let's stop fighting. Some people have said, well, why, why would you uh, get behind a man like Donald Trump? And some people said, but, well, you know, he said terrible things about you. How can you support him? Well, first of all, we buried the hatchet. I've come to, to know uh, Donald Trump. There are two different Donald Trumps. Or the land of the free. Take your positions behind the podiums while I briefly explain the rules. As moderator, I will attempt to guide the discussion, asking questions and follow up. Mr. Trump. One of the biggest political events anywhere in the world is happening right now with the Republican Party. I want you to understand that the Democrats, and I've watched them very intensely, even though it's a very, very boring thing to watch. We don't fight like we used to fight. We used to fight to win. Now we fight for no reason whatsoever. We don't even know what we're doing. Let me talk quiet. This is Donald Trump. I have no choice but to tell you. We do not need low energy. This is Donald Trump. You really think you're a good leader? I don't. 
Is lower energy than Jeb, if you want to know the truth. We need strong energy. I will tell you something. Donald Trump is a mess. Donald Trump is a waste. We do not need low energy. Donald Trump is a mess. Corey, good job, Corey. And, and I have to, and I have to, and I have to say it. I have to say it that uh, number one, I want to congratulate Marco Rubio on having run a really tough campaign. He's tough, he's smart, and he's got a great future. He's got a great future. But I have to say, I think he's a an overrated person. I don't think he's going to make it. He's nowhere in the polls. You know, I called him a lightweight. I said at one point he was a lightweight. This uh, lightweight Ruby. I call him lightweight Ruby. I watched it, and I'm sitting here, and he's over here. Somebody on my left doesn't matter, and he's over here, and I see him starting to sweat, like I have never seen anything like it. Thank God he has really large ears, the biggest ears I've ever seen. Because they were protecting him. It was going. Oh, he was sitting right there. No, he was. He was soaking wet. He was wet. Boy, I say, what the hell's going on over here? I thought he just came out of a swimming pool. He was soaking. No, when we get in with Putin, we need people that don't sweat. I said, wow. I said, are you okay? This guy was sweating so badly. Oh, he was sweating. Honestly, it was disgusting. All right, it's Rubio. This little guy, total disaster. Oh, which, by the way, Marco is a waste. I have a policy question for you, yes. sir. Let's see if he answers it. You're. I will. Don't worry about it, Marco. Don't worry. About it. Don't worry about it, little Marco. I will. Wait. Don't worry about it, little Marco. Thank you so much. First of all, thank you all for everything. I, I want to begin by uh, congrat. I haven't had a chance to speak to him yet, but I want to congratulate Donald Trump on his victory, a big victory in Florida. Marco is a mess. I want to congratulate what? Uh, what? I want to congratulate Donald Trump on What? I want to congratulate Donald Trump on a big victory in Florida. This is Donald Trump telling you to think big and live large. And this little guy is terminated. You're fired. get this question a lot but why did you endorse Donald Trump well you know when I dropped out why uh, would you why would you align yourself with that you're Ben Carson well you know you have to look at the you're Ben Carson why would you why would you why did you endorse Donald Trump I, I you're Ben Carson but, you're so much better than that well well you know you have to look at his family I always say one of the ways that you measure a person uh, sir, can I, I hate to ask this question, but you're Ben Carson. You have aligned yourself with the man who has bashed women, made countless racist remarks. He's a racist. You know, I was going to remain neutral. I, I, I you're know. Ben Carson. You're Ben Carson. But, this guy is, I'm sorry, he's a racist. He was a doctor, perhaps a, you know, an okay doctor, by the way. Why did you endorse Donald Trump? Actually, I think Ben Carson is lower energy than Jeb, if you want to know the truth. Ben Carson, you're talking about his face. You look at his face, and I think you're not going to find so much. He goes into the bathroom for a couple of hours, and he comes out, and now he's religious. Give me a break. Give me a break. Uh, it's such an honor to have Ben. He's a friend. He's become a friend. How stupid are the people of the country to believe this crap? What the hell have we come to? What have we come to? Ben Carson is a complete and total loser. Uh... I really appreciate uh, the endorsement, Ben. Thank you. Has he said some things that uh, I wouldn't say or that you wouldn't say? Of course. Why, uh, wait, but why did you endorse Donald Trump?
Hello. It is wonderful. <laughs> Thank you. We love you too. It is wonderful. It is wonderful to be here today with you and with my husband. I'm very proud of him. Hello. It is wonderful to be here. It is wonderful. It is wonderful to be here today with you and with my husband. He is a great leader. I'm very proud of him. He's hard worker. He's kind. He has a great heart. I'm very proud of him. He's smart. He's tough. He's a great communicator. He's a great negotiator. He's smart. He's a great leader. I'm very proud of him. He's a fighter. Bing bing. He's telling the truth. He's telling the truth. He's telling the truth. I'm very proud of him. He's fair. He's telling the truth. He's telling the truth. He's tough. He's smart. Hello. 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 Um, is there something you have learned about your dad in the course of this campaign that you Hello? didn't? Hello. Melania, is there something you've learned about him that you maybe didn't know? Uh, he's strong, he's passionate, he's smart, he's tough, and uh, he's an adult, and he's smart, he's tough, he's strong, he's passionate, um, and uh, he's smart, the, he's tough. The, the perseverance, I mean, that we always knew was there, that's always been there, but I mean... Hello? 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 Melania? He's strong, he's passionate, he's smart, he's tough, and uh, he's strong, uh, smart, but, he's but, tough. Uh, we're at a stage in our country where I think we all believe that you know, we really need to change. We need politicians who actually have real world experience, people who are actually going to work for the people. You know, this is the biggest uh, let's meet more voters. Uh, this is Andrew Mezzarocket. Hello. He's a small business owner who says he's leaning toward voting for you, Mr. Trump. He's got a question for, uh, for Donald Jr. Oh, great. Good. Yes, definitely. Thank you. I admire how you guys, you know, being in the public eye, have remained well grounded and became so successful. My question is, when your parents were getting divorced, how did your father help you get through that? He'd pick up the phone and say, hey, Jack Welsh is in the office. Say hi, Don. And I'm saying, uh, we always went to job sites with him. We'd be in, you know, his office playing with trucks as a six-year-old. He's strong, he's passionate, he's smart, he's tough, and uh, he's passionate about the country. Uh, he's strong, he's passionate, he's smart, he's tough, uh, and uh, he's strong, he's passionate, he's smart, he's tough, and uh, he's passionate uh, about the country. Uh, Don, I think it's inappropriate. You're fired. You're fired. Honestly, Kasich should not be allowed to run. Why is a guy allowed to run? All he's doing is just he goes from place to place and loses, and he keeps running. He doesn't have to run and take my votes, because he's taking my votes. He's taking my votes. Kasich should not be allowed to run. Kasich should not be allowed to run. I didn't start it. Because here's a guy just says I'm gonna stay like a stubborn like if you have a child who's a spoiled brat where they go I don't care daddy Jesus, man. I don't care daddy this is like a spoiled guy I don't care daddy and then you see him eating in the morning you ever see I have never seen he's stuffing pancakes in his mouth like this he puts pancakes this big in his mouth and he's shoving them in nasty guy he's a nasty guy people say why does he stay in the race what am I supposed to get, get out and leave it to these guys Get him the hell out of here! Jesus, man! 
as I suspend my campaign today, I have renewed faith that the Lord will show me the way forward and fulfill the purpose of my life. Thank you, and God bless. Everything we've got, but the voters chose another path. And so, with a heavy heart, we are suspending our campaign. Get them the hell out of here. Get them out of here. Get out. Yeah, get them out. Get them out of here. I'm going to tell you what I really think about it. This man is a pathological liar. He doesn't know the difference between truth and lies. He lies practically every word that comes out of his mouth. Lion Ted Cruz. I call him. I nicknamed him Lion. I say lion. How would you spell that? L Y E N. Lion. With a big apostrophe. He went after Heidi directly and smeared my wife, attacked her. Apparently, she's not pretty enough for Donald Trump. She's a pretty You're woman? Donald has a real problem with women. Lion Ted. Lion Ted. Lion Ted Cruz. Lion Ted Cruz. Lion Ted. Lion Ted. He's a liar. Oh, yeah. Lion Ted. Once well, again, Lion Ted. Time to drop out. Time to drop out. a mess. Kasich is a waste. Bye bye. We thought, after seeing Donald Trump on television, we thought if you, if you wore the, the goggles, the swim goggles, and you stuck your face in Cheetos, crushed Cheetos, that you would look just like Donald Trump in the end. You know, it does look like that Donald Trump dips his face in Cheetos dust. I believe it was Ben Shapiro uh, who made this observation. And, uh... You know, it does look like ben, that Donald Trump dips his face in Cheetos dust. Oh, wait, what flavor what do you have? I have regular. I have regular. You have regular the Pops or the Tart? What? What flavor do you have? I have regular. What? Do you have the puffs or do you have the no, uh, these are these are original flavors? Trump in the end.
So who will be Donald Trump's vice president? Will it be Jesse Ventura? Personally, I think that would just be an awesome ticket. A Trump Ventura ticket, personally, would be, would just be awesome. Double down on the reality star thing, Mike Rowe. He's been speaking for this working class voter uh, longer than Donald Trump has. Just go for it. And what about you, Andre? Who would you? Well, of course, I'd pick me. <laughs> All right, there you go. I think the best choice might be, in fact, Donald Trump as President Ted Cruz's VP. John Kasich is the only candidate that Trump did not give a derogatory nickname to during the, the primary campaign. And so that may be uh, a hint that he's in consideration as well. Is there any possibility that he'll team up with you? I know he says he wants someone with political experience. Has he talked to you about it? And if so, would no. you do it? Would the campaign be slogan be uh, vote for Big Don and Little Marco? Marco has been uh, very supportive. Uh, many people have been great. Uh, Jeff Sessions, Senator Jeff Sessions. Sarah Palin has been from day one incredible. Jerry Falwell, Ted Cruz, Chris Christie, who endorsed me. Incredible guy. I think you'd have to ask Donald. I don't know, you know, ask Donald what he wants. And by the way, there are no losers, they're all winners. These people are total winners. And I'm ready to make my decision. Donald Trump. Donald Trump is tough, he's smart, he's sharp. He's not going to allow bad things to continue to happen. This is Donald Trump. Remember, the buck starts here. All of the successful people I know have big egos. We will make America great again. Thank you all. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye. You've called women you don't like fat pigs, dogs, slobs, and disgusting animals. Does that sound to you like the temperament of a man we should elect as president? What I say is what I say. And honestly, Megan, if you don't like it, I'm sorry. Trump the president! in April, a meeting at Trump Tower. Let's talk about us. Okay. We were always friendly. Ooh, okay. Excuse me. <laughs> Have you made any mistakes in this campaign? Uh, no, I don't think so. Uh, I want to talk for a minute about the tweeting. Okay. Set the scene for me, because I know where I was when I was on the receiving end of a lot of those tweets, but I've always wondered where you were. Man, what a question. Thank you. Do you pick up your iPhone and yes. actually tweet yourself? Usually I'll be in a meeting, blah, 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 boom, put an exclamation point here, and I'll submit it. <laughs> so when you and I were having our little difficulty, um, you probably had some pretty nasty tweets sent your way. I, I don't want to say, but I've heard no, that. No, it's okay. But I, mean, but I, I will say this. Blah, blah, blah. Blowing up, blowing up, blowing up. You know what? I have millions of followers at Real Donald Trump. I have millions of followers. Blowing up, bump, millions of followers. You are so powerful now. I don't view myself as that. I mean, I view myself as a person, blowing up, that, like everybody else, is fighting for survival. <laughs> You're no longer just Donald Trump businessman or Donald Trump host of Celebrity Apprentice. Now you're steps away from the presidency. Have you given any thought in this position to the power and on the millions of people who take their cue from you? Yeah. The thing that gets me in trouble is retweets. The tweets I seem to do pretty well with. You know what? I have millions of followers. If I don't go all the way and if I don't win, I will consider it to be a total and complete waste of time, energy, and money. I have millions of followers. This weekend, I picked up 114,000 followers. 114,000 followers. 
millions of followers. And I watch our police and our firemen down at 7-Eleven right after it came down. Because I was down there. Somebody will say, oh, freedom of speech, freedom of speech, folks. Those days are over. Those days are over. America is getting taken apart, off, auctioned off, and, and just rapidly. Better hope I'm president. The Second Amendment ensures that the government can't take it away, right? Can't. I wrote this. And I do carry on occasion. Uh, uh, but I like to be unpredictable. I guess I, guess I have, have to do, do it myself. I know it's not. Do not let them intimidate you. Uh, oh, get him out. I like to punch him in the face, I'll tell you. Corey, good job, Corey. I mentioned food stamps, and that guy who's seriously overweight went crazy. And that kind of stuff only adds to the excitement. And some of them are nice. I mean, they're nice people. Ben Carson said the other day that he wants to abolish Medicare. How can you? I am going to give a major speech on probably Monday of next week. And when I heard that she was going to endorse me, I was so honored. Yeah. You betcha. Get in the plane and go home. Over there. Go home. Thank you, Chris. Wow. Thank you. I say this every night. Every day, every afternoon. The weakest person is Jeb Bush. So the weak. Lion. How would you spell that? L-Y-E-N. Lion. With a big apostrophe. Well, number one, I'm not stupid, okay? I can tell you that right now. Number two, I'm not stupid. Uh, I'm not stupid. That's my second favorite book of all time. Do you know what my first is? The Bible. The Pope said, Donald Trump is not a nice person. Donald Trump isn't Christian. Donald Trump is a very nice person. True. And I'm a very good Christian. True. I'm a very honest person. A good deal maker will make great deals. You have to get people in, grab them, hug them, kiss them, and get the deal done. I grab and grab and grab. Grab and 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 grab. Come on, come on up here. Come on up. Come here. Come on. So cute. Come on. Come on. So cute. I want it, mommy. I don't care, mommy. I want it, daddy. I don't care. I want it. Oh, hairspray's not like it used to be. It used to be real good. Today you put the hairspray on, it's good for 12 minutes, right? My hair look okay? I've said that if Ivanka weren't my daughter, perhaps I'd be dating her. We will make America great again. Mr. Donald J. Trump. We've witnessed horror beyond belief, no matter where you look. And now it's happening more and more, and it's never going to stop. found the leader who will help us deliver a safe society and a pros pros prosperous, really prosperous society. It's really prosperous. Indiana Governor Mike Pence. Mike Pence. Mike Pence. Mike Pence. Mike Pence. Endorsed somebody else, but it was more of an endorsement for me. He talked about Trump, then he talked about Ted, then he talked about Trump. Then he talked about Ted, who's a good guy, by the way, who's going to be speaking at the convention. Ted Cruz, good guy, good guy. And I call him Lion Ted, good guy. But he talked about Trump, Ted, then he went back to Trump. I said, who did he endorse? So with that, uh, I would like to introduce Governor Mike Pence. So when I see what happened, 
to Indiana with respect to the numbers. That was the single most important point. Also, his predecessor did a great job, by the way. Great job. I would like to introduce Mike Pence. Mike Pence. Mike Pence. Mike Pence was my first choice. Believe me, that's it. And you know that I know, and you know that I know, the next vice president will be... <laughs> Governor Mike Pence. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank Donald Trump. I accept your invitation to run and serve as Vice President of the United States of America. Where Donald Trump wants to build a wall and temporarily suspend immigration from countries, countries compromised by terrorism. Hillary Clinton plans to ignore to ignore the Supreme Court, reimpose executive amnesty, so and would increase. Thank you for your support. And here is former New York Mayor Rudolph Giuliani, who has been in the news a lot of late. Thank you. 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 of the media. I have known Donald Trump for almost 30 years. Like the president I worked for, Ronald Reagan. He has created greatness and accomplished great things. Greatness! It's time to make America one, one again. One America! From the top to the bottom, one America! One America! 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 Donald Trump will deliver the most important speech of his life. His most critical speech to date. The tone and tenor of the speech is really important. He should try to be statesmanlike. Will he rise to the moment? That's a big question. Thank you very much. Ay, ay, ay. Oh, boy. <laughs> I said I was going to fund the Prime Minister. And I didn't know this was going to happen, so I guess we just keep going along, right? It's an honor. Believe me, it's an honor. And I'm continuing to fund my campaign, large portions of it. In fact, I thought I gave $2 million last month, and they said, no, you actually gave 3.8. I said, oh, it's always good when you don't even know what you gave, and it doesn't matter. <laughs> Where's Dan Scavino there? Come up, Dan, for a second. I just... You know what he is? He's a Facebook, Twitter junkie. This guy, 
I hate to do this. A lot of people saying, what's Facebook? What's Twitter? And that's unfortunately, we're dealing in a modern age. I hear the numbers are astronomical. Where do you hear these numbers? You know, where did you hear the numbers? You won't even believe them. Go ahead. Go ahead. Thank you, President Trump. Mr. Trump hit 10 million followers on Twitter. 10 million. Mike. Mike. This, this, this. Mike. This will never be done again. It's impossible to be done again with this Mike. man right here. Mike. A total of 22 and a half million followers between Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. 22 and a half million. And our next vice president of the United States is at Mike underscore Pence. Mike Pence. My leader, right? Right? My man, right? Oh, boy. Ay, ay, ay. My leader. I'm a real estate guy. I build buildings. If people really dislike me, and I don't think they do, hey, look, if I have kids that like me that much, how bad can I be? Right? Right? And they love their daddy. I was a good daddy. Let me tell you something. We, if for no other reason, if people really dislike me, you have no choice. You gotta go for Trump. You have no choice. You gotta go for Trump. You have no choice. You have no choice. You gotta go for Trump. You gotta go for Trump. You gotta go for Trump. Fascist, Nazis, and Communists. Keep the oil. 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 I know her, and she'd make a good president or a good vice president. Did I say that? Ooh. Okay. Excuse me. <laughs> Fascist. Failure. Nazis. Burger. I hope you enjoyed that. Why don't you go ahead and like Super Deluxe on Facebook right now. Go ahead. Go ahead do it right now. Joining us right now is the Republican nominee for President of the United States of America. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Donald Trump. We
and I, I could. I, I got to uh, kindly uh, thank you. It's been amazing to follow and, and, and uh, exciting because you, you say some shocking things. <laughs> but I'm trying not to. Anyway. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Hillary uh, getting sick. Uh, uh, you, you handled that very well, saying I hope she gets better. Where, have you... Uh, gotten close to getting sick through this whole campaign or uh, so far um, you know staying strong how do you not get sick from I shaking don't know all hands? you know how by not thinking about it I don't even want to I don't want to <laughs> sorry about that yeah, sorry to bring it up you said something because uh, everyone's saying oh is there a bromance between Vladimir Putin and all this stuff and you know and what is the uh, what is a celebrity nickname for you guys and I thought of Vlump Vlump I thought it was good Vlump Vlump <laughs> Last time we were here, we did a mock uh, job interview. Okay. Because this is the biggest right. job in the world, the right. president of the United States. Uh, can we continue that interview and finish it? Because now we're sure. only down to two candidates. Uh, why would you excel at this job? The whole thing is about winning. If I don't win, if I don't win, if I don't win, I will consider a total and complete waste of time, energy, and money. I really mean it. The whole thing is about winning. Because I love people and I want to do right for people. Okay. <laughs> Choking me up a little bit. Uh, uh, no, yeah. <laughs> uh, 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 Can I mess your hair up? Donald J. Trump is calling for a total and complete shutdown of Muslims entering the United States. I have a great relationship with the blacks. I have, I've always had a great relationship with the blacks. You are not allowed to be a president if you're not born in this country. He may not have been born in this country. He has pulled one of the great cons in the history of politics. Can I mess your hair up? When Mexico sends its people, they're not sending their best. They're bringing drugs, they're bringing crime, they're rapists. And some, I assume, are good people. Can I mess your hair up? Well, if you see somebody getting ready to throw a tomato, knock the crap out of them, <laughs> would you? Seriously. I will pay for the legal fees, I promise. I love the old days. You know what they used to do to guys like that when they were in a place like this? They'd be carried out on a stretcher, folks. I'd like to punch him in the face, I'll tell you. Oh, uh, look at my African-American over here. Look at him. This African-American, look at him. Are you the greatest? Part of the problem is... Nobody wants to hurt each other anymore, right? Uh, Donald, it's good to be with you. We're going to have a debate where we are talking about the important issues facing our country. Wrong. I want to make America great again. I'm going to be able to do it. I don't believe Hillary will. And Rosie O'Donnell, I said very tough things to her, and I'm very proud of it. And I think everybody would agree that she deserves it, and nobody feels sorry for her. Secretary Clinton. We need to have strong growth, Wrong. fair growth, Wrong. sustained growth. And people who have looked at Wrong. both of our plans have concluded Wrong. that mine would create 10 million jobs and yours would lose us three and a half million jobs. And you are going that, to approve one of the biggest tax cuts in history. You are going to approve one of the biggest tax increases in history. I'm going to cut taxes, big league, and you're going to raise taxes, big league. Whoa. And somebody who's been very vicious to me, Rosie O'Donnell. Well, let me get you to pause right there, Mr. Trump. You're calling for tax cuts for the wealthy. I'd like you to defend that. And this next two-minute answer goes to you. Did you ask me a question? Did you ask me a question? When I did an interview with Howard Stern, I said very tough things. I think everybody would agree. Rosie O'Donnell is a total mess. <laughs> Okay. Mr. Trump, this year, Secretary Clinton became the first woman nominated for president by a major party. Earlier this month, you said she doesn't have, quote, a presidential look. She's standing here right now. What did you mean by that? Uh, she doesn't have the look. She doesn't have the stamina. I said she doesn't have the stamina. Stamina. I said she doesn't have the stamina. 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 Ah, ah. I said she doesn't have the stamina. I need water. Help me. I need water. Help. 
Woo. Secretary Clinton. To be president of this country, you need tremendous stamina. <laughs> believe me, I don't believe she does have the stamina. Help. 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 Secretary Clinton. Help. Help. He tried to switch from, from looks to stamina. But this is a man who has called women pigs, slobs, and dogs. And oh, really? pigs, Wrong. slobs, Wrong. and dogs. Wrong. Well, it also could be somebody sitting on their bed that weighs 400 pounds, okay? Could be Rosie O'Donnell. Woo! 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 All right. Well, that is going to do it for us. That concludes our debate for this evening, a spirited one. We covered a lot of ground. Good night, everyone. Good evening from Longwood University in Farmville, Virginia, and welcome to the first and only vice presidential debate of 2016, Senator King. It is so great to be back at Longwood University in Farmville, Virginia, but the thought of Donald Trump as commander in chief scares us to death. Governor Pence. Well, honestly, Elaine, I never imagined, never imagined I'd have the opportunity to be sitting at a table like this. Thank you, Elaine, and thank, thanks for a table like this. Senator Kane. Donald Trump. Donald Trump can't start a Twitter war with Miss Universe without shooting himself in the foot. Donald Trump doesn't have a plan. He said, um, I have a secret plan. And then he said, um, I know more than all the generals about ISO. And then he said, I'm going to call the generals to help me figure out a plan. And finally, he said, I'm going to fire all the generals. You're fired. Why do you think Putin will respect a Trump-Pence administration? Strength. Governor Pence said, inarguably, Vladimir Putin is a better leader than Barack Obama has been. That's nonsense. Vladimir Putin is a dictator. <clears throat> Vladimir Putin is a dictator. <clears throat> Vladimir Putin is a dictator. Well, first and foremost, Donald Trump supports our troops. Donald Trump supports our troops. Donald Trump supports our veterans. He won't pay taxes. Donald Trump has paid all the taxes that he's... <clears throat> <clears throat> When Donald Trump says women should be punished. There has to be some form of punishment. Or Mexicans are rapists. They're rapists. Or John McCain's not a hero. I like people that weren't captured, okay? He is showing you who he is. Senator, you, you, you whipped out that Mexican thing again. <laughs> uh, Donald Trump and I would never support legislation that punished women who made the heartbreaking choice to end a pregnancy. There has to be some form of punishment. For the woman? Yeah. Why did Donald Trump say that? We just that? never would. Why did he say that? Well, look, look it's... Can you defend it? Can you defend it? Can you defend it? He's a pussy. Can you defend it? Thanks for a table like this. He's a pussy. Good evening. I'm Martha Raddatz from ABC News. And I'm Anderson Cooper from CNN. Ladies and gentlemen, the Republican nominee for president, Donald J. Trump, and the Democratic nominee for president, Hillary Clinton. Thank you very much for being here. We're going to begin with a uh, question from uh, one of the members in our town hall, Ken Bone. Ken? Ken? What steps will your energy policy take? Ken? Ken? Ken Bone? What steps will your energy policy take to meet our energy needs? while at the same time remaining environmentally friendly and minimizing job loss for fossil power plant workers? Mr. Trump, two minutes. Absolutely. I think it's such a great question because the EPA, Environmental Protection Agency, is killing these energy companies. Not good. We have another audience question. Patrice Brock. Patrice? Do you feel you're modeling appropriate and positive behavior for today's Of youth? course I do. 
Of course I do. I have great respect for women. Nobody has more respect for women than I do. We received a lot of questions online, Mr. Trump, about the tape that was released on Friday. As you can imagine, you called what you said locker room banter. You described kissing women without consent, grabbing their genitals. And I did try and fuck her. She was married. And she was married. I better use some Tic Tacs just in case I start kissing her. You know, I'm automatically attracted to beautiful. I just start kissing them. It's like a magnet. I don't even wait. And when you're a star, they let you do it. You can do anything. Whatever you want. Grab them by the pussy. That is sexual assault. You brag that you have sexually assaulted women. Do you understand that? No, I didn't say that at all. I don't think you understood what was said. This was locker room talk, but it's locker room talk. And she won't even mention the word, and nor will President Obama. He won't use the term locker room talk. Now, to solve a problem, you have to be able to state what the problem is, or at least say the name. She won't say the name, and President Obama won't say the name, but the name is there. It's locker room talk. Ken Parkway says the question. Thank you. Affordable Care Act, known as Obamacare, what will you do to bring the cost down? That, that first one goes to Secretary Thank Clinton you. because you started out the last one to the audience. No, go ahead, Donald. No, I'm a gentleman, Hillary. Go ahead. We are in a situation in our country where we were to start... She has tremendous hate in her heart. Believe me. Between Facebook and Twitter, I have almost 25 million people. I'm not unproud of it, to be honest with you. Believe me. I moved on her like a bitch. Good evening, thanks for joining us tonight. My conversation with Melania Trump. Until today, she's not spoken on camera about the video of him and Billy Bush on that bus uh, 11 years ago and his remarks about grappling women and being allowed to, allowed to do that because he's famous. You know, I'm automatically attracted to beautiful. I just start kissing them. It's like a magnet. And when you're a star, you can do anything. Grab them by the pussy. Hello? My husband is real. He's raw. He tells it as it is. He's kind, he's a gentleman. When you, when you came down that escalator... He's kind, he's a gentleman, he's an adult. He supports women, he, he encourages them, he encourages them to... to... he encourages them to... I gotta use some Tic Tacs just in case I start kissing her. Well, he's sort of get away with things like that. My husband is kind and he's a gentleman. Your husband said that he described it as, as locker room talk. Mm -hmm. Well, is that what it is to you? Just locker room talk? Yes. 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 No. Just locker room talk? Yeah, it's, it's kind of uh, two teenage boys. He's in that age and all the boys are in that age. That, yeah, they say some bad words and it's very normal. Actually, they should behave better. Right? 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 It he was, was 59. Not... <laughs> but, um, Grab him by the pussy. A boy talk. Grab him by the pussy. They, they were kind of a, a boy talk. Oh, nice legs, huh? He was lead on, like egg on, from uh, the host. You feel the host, Billy Bush, was sort of egging him on? Yes. Yes. Billy Bush 
Yes. Feel the push. Yes. Yes. Grab him by the pussy. Feel the push. So a number of women have come forward. They've made allegations against your husband. Some of them go back more than 30 years. He has said they're lying. Do you believe him? Do you believe him? I believe my husband. I believe my husband. I'm a very honest person. I'm a very honest person. And honestly, I'm a very honest person. He tells it as it is. You start kissing them, so it's a magnet. I don't even wait. You can do anything. Grab him by the pussy. He tells it as it is. The audience here in the hall has promised to remain silent. No cheers, boos, or other interruptions so we and you can focus on what the candidates have to say. No noise except right now as we welcome the Democratic nominee for president, Secretary Clinton, and the Republican nominee for president, Mr. Trump. Mm, thank you. Mm. Such a nasty woman. I want to build the wall. We need the wall. The Border Patrol, ICE, they all want the wall. We stop the drugs. We, we shore up the border. One of my first acts will be to get all of the drug lords, all of the bad ones. We have some bad, bad people in this country that have to go out. We have some bad hombres here, and we're going to get them out. When it comes to the wall that Donald... She's been doing this for 30 years. Why the hell didn't you do it over the last... 15, 20 years, I, you were I very much spent. involved. Excuse me! My turn. You were very much involved in every aspect of this country. Very much. And you do have experience. I say the one thing you have over me is experience, but it's bad experience. Oh. Because what you've done has turned out badly. The problem is, you talk, but you don't get anything done, Hillary. Oh. Trump, thank you. Mm. The Russian government has mm. engaged in espionage against Americans. Mm. They have hacked American uh, mm. websites, American accounts, and private people. Finally, will Donald Trump admit mm. Russian espionage against Americans, which he mm. actually encouraged in the past? Those are the questions mm. we need answered. We've never had anything like this happen in any of our elections before. How did we get on to Putin? The uh, no, no, no. She wants open borders. People are going to pour into our country. People are going to come in from Syria. She wants 550% more people than President Obama. <laughs> now, you can say that that's okay. And Hillary can say that that's okay. But it's not okay with me. Now we can talk about Putin. I don't know Putin. He said nice things about me. Oh. If we got along well, that would be good. Yeah. If Russia and the United States got along well and went after ISIS, that would be good. Yeah. He has no respect for her. Look, Putin, from everything I see, has no respect for this w w person. Well, that's mm. because he'd rather mm. have a puppet mm. as president. No puppet, no puppet. It's pretty clear. You're the puppet. Pretty, pretty clear. You won't admit. No, you're the puppet. Russians have engaged in cyber attacks against the United States mm. of America that you encouraged against our people, mm. that you are willing to spout the Putin line, do whatever he wants to do, he has a very clear favorite in this race. I find that just so, absolutely so She troubling. doesn't like Putin because Putin has outsmarted her at every step Mr. of the Trump, way. Mr. Trump, Excuse me. I do get to ask some questions. Yes, that's fine. Do you condemn any interference by Russia in the American election? Of course I condemn. Of course I can. I don't know Putin. I have no idea. I never met Putin. This is not my best friend. I didn't meet him. I haven't spent time with him. This is not my best friend. I didn't have dinner with him. I didn't go hiking with him. Never spoken to him on the phone? I never met him in Moscow. Where? Never spoken to him on the phone? Uh, I have never spoken to him on the phone, no. This is not my best friend. But if the United States got along with Russia, it wouldn't be so bad. Let me tell you, the Russians have said, According to many, many reports. I can't believe they allowed us to do this. 
Well, Chris, I am on record she wants saying to that we control. need control doesn't work that uh, but way. But what we want to do but is But when I started sure this campaign, I started it very strongly. It's called Make uh, America Great Again. We're going to make America great. Uh, you get shot walking to the store. They have no education. They have no jobs. I would be more for African Americans. And Latinos than she could ever do in 10 lifetimes. But they get the vote. And then they come back and say, what's there in four years? <laughs> Americans, we must immediately suspend immigration from any nation that has been compromised by terrorism. We don't want them in our country. My dad was the smartest dad, the best, absolutely the best. Make America great again. <laughs> you remind me of clowns and clowns scare me. There's therapy for that, Simon. There's therapy. That is one of the worst things I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> we will make America great again. I can't, I can't listen to that. I'm going to say no. Bye. Today on Trump TV, a tremendous lineup from the greatest and best network ever on television. It's always a happy day when you start your morning with Scott Bayo. Breakfast with Bay. I'm a guy. This is how we talk. Ladies out there, grow up. Breakfast with Bay. Then, join the adorable Baron Trump at 9 for the Cyber Corner. I have a young boy, Baron. He's very smart. He's using the computer so much. Today, Baron teaches you how to change your Twitter avatar from the egg. It's going to entertain you bigly. David Duke stops by Dobby's World with Goonies star Robert Dobby to give his racially charged review of The Accountant. The Jews totally run Hollywood. Every one of the ten largest Hollywood studios of movies and television are all Jewish control. I can give you the names. <laughs> Our African-American Dr. Ben Carson teaches you how to perform a DIY lobotomy. If he can keep his eyes open, that is. It's a brand new Dr. Ben, right after Hannity. And at prime time, stick around for Donald tonight where he inspects all 50 Miss Teen Lithuania finalists. Could one of them be his next wife? Rated M for mature audiences. And cap your night off with a dose of crazy. America! 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 End Times with Rudy Giuliani is on at midnight. Trump TV, making TV great again. USA, thank you, USA! And you know the beauty of this crowd? It's without a guitar. There's no guitar, there's no pianos. Thank you very much, everybody. So long, everybody. We've got a vote for Trump, and we've got a... Here comes that blonde again. Wow. Here's what's going on. Michigan is a blue state. I got your blue state right here, baby. We want Trump. 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 I met an animal rights guy here the other day, and he gave me a hard time for eating venison. And I said, yeah. We're just for you, asshole. I'm killing more deer this year. So my dad disciplined me. He said, I wanted to get me a guitar, Dad. He said, well, you got to get a job, son. I get high on guitar licks. I'm going to make America great again, buddy. I know it. How about a little Wang Dang Sweet Poon Tang for the children? Asshole. Asshole. How about a little Wang Dang Sweet Poon Tang for the children? Asshole.
oh shit. Donald Trump needs to be president. Let's go red in Michigan. Jesus Christ. Listen up. You're going to love this. When I was in prison, I know I was praying and asking God. And, and God warned me not to get involved with politics. If Donald Trump actually does become president, it's going to be attributed to nothing else than a miracle from God. And we'll be able to describe it as nothing else than supernatural intervention. If Donald Trump is elected president of the United States, it will be a miracle. One of the things we've done around here, we stick them under coffee tables and end tables. You just stack them up and then put a cloth over them yeah. or, or get a, a piece of, a, you know, cardboard or, or a, a piece of plywood mm -hmm. and you make a top and then you just stack this food. You can have your whole living room with end tables and coffee tables made out of food buckets. Jackson is 50% Mexican. <laughs> yes. Jim, it's like... <laughs> You're Where's so his fun. dad? Isn't hey, he hey. cute? A good little Mexican boy here is going to help us introduce to you our Look brand new 20 year shelf life food. Oh, he's eating everything. Oh, he's eating. Oh, lovely. Yeah. Okay. I can't get so, it. Look at I'm, that. I'm supposed to be introducing this right here. This is so many different kinds of foods. Hey, Can you all see I that right there? There's there's an enchilada. This is 20 right years shelf life food, uh -huh. and I put some of that yeah. cheese sauce on the on the taco. It is so that's called good. queso. Cheese that's, sauce is called queso. Oh dear Jesus! That's awesome. Oh, called queso. I'm a gringo that's trying to tell you about queso. Mexican queso. food. Yeah. It's not going to work. No, that's little Lori, queso. help me. You uh, you no. you got some Mexican blood. <laughs> Five of our kids are full-blooded Mexican wow, kids. So this is Mexican food that wow. real life Mexicans approve of. I don't know about you, but there's nothing like queso mm, sauce. Tasty. I'll tell you that right now. It is Why amazing. do you endorse Donald Trump? Why are you serving on his advisory committee? What What's going on here? Well, let me tell you some words of wisdom. When you're on God's side, you're always on the right side. Yeah. Donald Trump is on God's side. Amen. That's it, doctor. Preach it. Amen. But and you know what? <laughs> Donald Trump uh, exudes a strength. And another great thing that I admire about Donald Trump, I'm sorry. he does I'm not sorry. lie. He's not a liar. He will tell the truth, even if it's not always to his benefit, which is amazing as a politician. I have never seen that in a politician. Wow. This would be a great Christmas present for somebody because put a big bow on it, you know. Yeah. In a time of a, a in a time idea. of emergency, Personally. this is going to be one you of the most your, sought after items that paper, you're going to wish you had. Yeah. And yeah. everybody who has storage of food, you ought to have. That's right. One of our Absolutely. little porta buckets. Listen, give me my bucket. Let me go be rest in yeah. peace and have this, fun. This, this here, it's the spread the word Bible this bucket. This great big huge bucket. Wow. Inside of here is two dozen Bibles. 24 Bibles in this bucket. I think it'd be a fantastic idea, really, to honestly bury a bucket of the Bibles. Oh, 274, Trump. Fox has President Trump. Donald Trump is president. We're right, people. Right. Against all odds. All the polls were wrong. Right. Yeah. All, all the polls were wrong. If you live in the blue, Put it back on the screen.
If you live in the blue, right. I would say, oh God, oh God, help me. Help California and Arizona. Oh God, oh my God, forgive me. Oh, forgive us. Because those are the ones oh who God. came against wow. the will of God in this election. And God spoke to me that in Los Angeles alone, there's going to be such an earthquake come. Yes that literally the big buildings will be laying on their sides. All of L.A. is going to collapse, downtown L.A. And we're going to have civil war. That's right. I told, I told y'all I didn't vote, right? But if I would have voted, I would have voted on Trump. Yay is in the building! He's a good man. Tommy, what are you doing here today? Tommy, you're doing well. Long time. We've been friends for a long time. Tommy, what are you doing here today? He's a good man. We've been friends for a long time. Life, we discussed it. Tommy, what are you doing here today? 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 I just want to take a picture right now. Why would he do that? He's a jackass. My friend and the president-elect of the United States of America, Donald Trump. Thank you very much. It's very familiar territory news conferences because we used to give them on a almost daily basis. I think we stopped giving them because we were getting quite a bit of inaccurate news. Uh, I'm a very high profile person, would you say? Uh, so there's a great spirit going on right now. Uh, 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 a spirit that many people have told me they've never seen before, ever, 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 ever. ever. We're going to create jobs. I said that I will be uh, the greatest jobs producer that God ever created. And I mean that. I really, I'm going to work very hard on that. We have a movement. It's a movement like the world has never seen before. It's a movement that a lot of people didn't expect. Okay. Uh, questions? Yes. On the border fence, it now appears clear U.S. taxpayers will have to pay for it up front. It's not a fence. It's a wall. We're going to build a wall. I would say we are going to build a wall, and people would go crazy. I would then say, who's going to pay for the wall? And people would all scream out, 25, 30,000 people, because nobody's ever had crowds like Trump has had. I'd say, who's going to pay for the wall? And they will scream out, Mexico, 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 Mexico. And I, I'll be honest, Mexico will pay for the wall, Mexico. Mexico. You know, I've been hearing more and more about a thing called fake news, and they're talking about people that go and say all sorts of things. I could name them, but I won't bother. But you have a few sitting right in front of us. CNN, it's a disgrace. And I say that, and I say that. I think it's a disgrace. It's a disgrace what took place. It's a disgrace, and I say that, and I say that. Go, go ahead. Go ahead. No, not you. Not you. Let's go. Go ahead. Go ahead. Not you. Go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead, you've been waiting. Go ahead. As far as we understand the intelligence community. Stand up, please. Yeah. Uh, as far as we understand it, the intelligence community I, asked. I tell this to people all the time. Be careful. Be very careful. Be careful. I always tell them in your hotel rooms. And no matter where you go, you're going to probably have cameras. Be very careful. In those rooms, you have cameras in the strangest places. Cameras that are so small with modern technology, you can't see them and you won't know. You better be careful or you'll be watching yourself on nightly television. I tell this to people all the time. Thank you, Mr. President. Can I want to thank here? everybody. So, just so you understand, you're fired. You're fired. You're fired. He was caught on camera.
saying that he takes what he wants from women and he dropped the P word in the process. Grab him by the pussy. You cannot be the president and use the P word. <laughs> Harvey, let's listen in. You cannot be the president and use the P word. Grab him by the pussy. He's gonna make America great again. Let's go, Donald Trump. Everyone having fun? You having fun? Sir. Steve just came up to say hello. Donald Trump is not going to be that bad. Sing it! God bless the USA! We have all been witness to a very grueling year and a half for the president-elect. We have been witnessed to a barrage of propaganda that left us all breathless with anticipation, not knowing if God could reverse all the negative lies against Mr. Trump. So help me God. So help me God. We stand at the birth of a new millennium. A new millennium. Ready to unlock the mysteries of space and unite the civilized world against radical Islamic terrorism. And most importantly, we will be protected by God. It's going to be only America first. America first. America first. America first. America first. America first. The world is a mess. The world is an angry place. Mothers and children trapped in poverty in our inner cities. Rusted out factories scattered like tombstones across the landscape. The world is as angry as it gets. We must protect our borders from the ravages of other countries making our products stealing our companies and destroying our jobs. The world is an angry place. The world is a total mess. The world is a mess. Oh, that's right, sir. 
Whoa! Yes. Whoa! You know, I'm automatically attracted to beautiful. I just start kissing them. It's like a magnet. When you look at this tremendous sea of love, I call it a sea of love. It's really something special that all these people traveled here from all parts of the country, maybe the world, but all parts of the country, and they loved what I had to say. So many, you know, so many. I'm looking out there, and you're looking at me. So Put your cameras down. Pull up, pull up your gown. Thank you very much. Great talent. Thank you. And I respect that. I respect that. But I have to say, uh, the crowd was unbelievable today, you know? Let me ask you, should I keep the Twitter going or not? Keep it going? I think so. The world is an angry place. Lots of bad things are happening. The world is as angry as it gets. The world is a mess. The world is a Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States. Stop it. Today. Today I am keeping another promise to the American people by nominating. Stop it. Judge Neil Gorsuch of the United States Supreme Court to be of the United States Supreme Court. And I would like to ask Judge Gorsuch and his wonderful wife Louise to please step forward Please, Louise, Judge. Here they come. Please, Louise, Judge. So cute. Judge Gorsuch. Judge Gorsuch. Judge Gorsuch. Judge Neil Gorsuch. Judge Gorsuch. Judge Gorsuch. Judge Gorsuch. Judge Gorsuch. May God bless you. May God bless our glorious nation. Judge Gorsuch. So was that a surprise? Was it? Come on. Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States. I just wanted to begin by mentioning that we're becoming a drug-infested nation. Drugs are becoming cheaper than candy bars. Candy bars. Candy bars. Drug-infested candy bars. I am talking and, and really talking because many of our nations Reporters and folks will not tell you the truth. 
Honestly, the press has become so dishonest. Tomorrow they will say, Donald Trump rants and raves. Donald Trump rants and raves. I'm not ranting and raving. I'm not ranting and raving. I'm just telling you. You know, you're dishonest people. The news is fake because so much of the news is fake. As you know, our administration inherited many problems. To be honest, I inherited a mess. It's a mess. A mess. A disaster, folks. It's a disaster. A disaster. I just want to let you know. I inherited a mess. A mess. A mess. It's a mess. Chaos. A mess. Chaos. Beginning on day one, our administration went to work to tackle these challenges. 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 I've also worked to install a cabinet that will be one of the great cabinets ever assembled in American history. One of the great cabinets for decades, decades and decades and decades, folks. And with that, I just say, God bless America, and let's take some uh, questions. Uh, aren't, you, aren't you concerned, sir, that you are undermining the people's faith in the First Amendment, freedom of the press, the press in this country, when you call stories you don't like fake news? I see Why tone. Not? You know the word tone. The tone is such hatred. I'm really not a bad person, by the way. But the tone is such, the tone is such hatred. The tone, the tone, the tone. You look at your show that goes on at 10 o'clock in the evening. You just take a look at that show. That is a constant hit. The panel is almost always exclusive anti-Trump. I turn on the TV, I watch it, I see it. I'm amazed by it. The tone is such hatred. The tone. And I just think you'd be a lot better off, I honestly do, by being different. 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 But I know what's good. I know what's bad. Sometimes something that should be very positive, they'll make okay. I don't mind bad stories. I, I can handle a bad story better than anybody. Better than anybody. If you were straight and, and really Hold it like it is. I would be your biggest booster. I would be your biggest fan in the world. I mean, it's story after story after story after story after story after story after story is bad. I won. I won. I won. I won. I guess it was the biggest electoral college win since Ronald Reagan. The biggest electoral college win since Ronald Reagan. So that's the way it goes. You said today that you had the biggest electoral margin since Ronald Reagan with 304 or 306 electoral votes. In fact, President Obama got 365. And two well, I'm talking about Republicans. The president, yeah. president uh, Obama, 332, yeah. and George H.W. Bush, 426 when he won as president. So why should Americans trust Well, him? no, I was told, I was given that information. I don't know. I was just given. We had a very, very big margin. I guess my question is, why should Americans trust you when you accuse the information they receive of being fake when you're providing information that's well, fake? Well, I don't know. I was given that information. I was given, I've, actually, I've seen that information around. I hope going forward we can be a little bit, a little bit different and maybe get along a little bit better if that's possible. Well, maybe it's not and that's okay too. I'm really not a bad person. Have you heard about all these teachers having sex with their students? Is this not crazy? What is going on? Well, I don't think the male students have been hurt by it. In fact, they're going around bragging about it, as I understand it. So, uh, you know, it's I don't wow. see a lot of I don't see a lot of damage done. I don't see a lot of damage done. I don't see a lot of damage done. And I would say her husband cannot be happy. To truly succeed as a country, we must realize the full potential of women in our economy. That is why I was thrilled to host the White House's Women's Business Leaders Roundtable. Very exciting, great women. Based on her picture, I would never take her. She looks like a fucking third-grade hooker. Believe me, 
we announced the creation of the joint United States-Canada Council for Advancement of Women Entrepreneurs and Business Leaders. Actually, very exciting. I would never take that. I don't think she's not even attractive. She's not a good-looking girl. 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 She's a slob. Who the fuck? It's total bullshit. And, you know, it's not right. I campaigned on helping women in the workforce, and we are going to deliver on that promise. Believe me. Thank you. God bless you. And God bless America. We have by the person. Very exciting. Great women. The President of the United States. Stop. Lion Ted Cruz, Lion Ted. <laughs> little Marco, little Marco. Stop it. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Vice President, members of Congress, the First Lady of the United States. <laughs> and citizen of South America, tonight, as we mark... Hello? Hello? It is wonderful to be here. Thank you. <laughs> Hello? Hello? <laughs> Thank you. God bless you. Hello. And God bless Hello. the United States. We've begun preparing to repeal and replace Obamacare. You're going to be very proud of what we put forth having to do with health care. Obamacare is a complete and total disaster. We're going to be submitting a plan. It'll be repeal and replace. It will be essentially simultaneously, most likely be on the same day or the same week, but probably the same day, could be the same hour. People know that he will make good on these promises, his plans, because if he doesn't, it's just another typical politician promising to do things they don't intend. Making good on that repealing and replacing Obamacare is important. Everybody's got to be covered. This is an unrepublican thing for me to say. Universal health care. I am going to take care of everybody. Could be the same hour. Secretary Price and I, along with my entire administration, are committed to repealing and replacing this disastrous law. Obamacare. And I tell Paul Ryan, I tell every one of them, I say the best thing you can do politically is wait a year, because it's going to blow itself off the map. But that's the wrong thing to do for the country. It's the wrong thing to do.
for our citizens. He's done talking about Obamacare repeal. Now he wants action. And when Mick Mulvaney, the budget director, said the president wants a vote, Speaker Ryan said we don't have the vote. And Mick Mulvaney, the budget director, told the speaker the president doesn't care. He wants a vote and he wants it now. The president doesn't care. It's time to vote. In a dramatic twist at the 11th hour, Donald Trump has pulled the vote on a health care bill to repeal and replace Obamacare, marking a major setback for the president. Paul Ryan needs to step down as Speaker of the House. Speaker Ryan, you come in and you sell him a bill of goods, which ends up a complete and total failure. Total and complete failing pile of garbage. And you allow our president in his first 100 days to come out of the box like that? Folks, folks, I want to be clear. This is not on President Trump. Sure. No one expected a businessman to completely understand the nuances, the complicated ins and outs of Washington and its legislative process. It's very sad. How would he know which individuals upon whom he would be able to rely? It's very unfair. Many of them friends and establishment colleagues of Speaker Ryan. It's very unfair. How could you possibly misjudge this? And why start with this? If you're not sure, you've got the votes. Now, I certainly have not spoken with the president about any of this. But I can only imagine that he and his aides took on health care because they believed you had his back. And you didn't. And I hate it. Ryan has hurt you. Ow. And he's got to go. Bye-bye. Go home to mommy. Go home to mommy. Yeah, get that guy out of here. When you were with the president of China, China? you were launching these military strikes. When did you tell us? Well, before dessert? I was sitting at the table. We had finished dinner. We're now having dessert. And we had the most beautiful piece of chocolate cake that you've ever seen. And I have watched speculation for three days now on what the dessert was like. President Xi was enjoying it. And I was given the message from the generals that the ships are locked and loaded and we made a determination to do it. So what happens, as I said, we've just launched 59 missiles heading to Iraq. And we had the most beautiful piece of chocolate cake well, that you've you seen. Headed to Syria? Yes, heading toward Syria. This is during dessert chocolate cake dessert. We've just fired 59 missiles. And I, I, what does he do? Finish his dessert and go home. He was okay. He was okay. Wow. Wow. I love that. I have my own opinions. You can have your own opinions. But I want to know your opinions. You're the President of the United okay. States. It's enough. Thank you. Thank you very much. I hate it. What the hell is going on? There's nobody you can call. Hello? I hate it. I hate it. What the hell is going on? They don't want me to use hairspray. They want me to use the pump. So if I take hairspray, and if I spray it in my apartment, which is all sealed, and you're telling me that affects the ozone layer. Yes. I say, no way, folks. No way. Welcome to the White House. You know, it's the greatest privilege of my life to serve as vice president to a president who is fighting every day. Even if the Paris Agreement 
were implemented in full, it would only produce a two-tenths of one degree. Think of that. This much. Celsius reduction by the year 2100. Tiny, tiny amount. In fact, under the Paris Accord, billions of dollars Billions and billions and billions and billions and billions of dollars that ought to be invested right here in America will be sent to the very countries that have taken our factories and our jobs away from us. So think of that. Think of that. One billion dollars. I am fighting every day for the great people of this country, who I love. Believe me. Believe me. Believe me. Psst, please clap. Believe me. Thank you. Thank you. So we're getting out. Believe me, this is not what we need. Believe me. While the current agreement effectively blocks the development of clean coal in America. And the mines are starting to open up. And I happen to love the coal miners. We're having a big opening in two weeks. A big opening of a brand new mine. It's unheard of. For many, many years, that hasn't happened. They asked me if I'd go. I'm going to try. Coal. The United States will withdraw from the Paris Paris, Paris, Paris. Climate Accord. Thank you. Thank you. My fellow Americans, when I ran for president, I made a commitment to the American people to repeal and replace Obamacare. But now, that's changed. Today, through the sharper image, you can enjoy the world's greatest stakes in your own home, with family, friends, anytime. And you're going to finally have the affordability they need and the quality they deserve at a lower price. Trump steaks are by far the best tasting, most flavorful beef you've ever had truly in a league of their own. It'll cost you less money by a lot, and it'll be a much better steak. You can't do better than that. Trump steaks are the world's greatest steaks, and I mean that in every sense of the word. Get something that's going to be really, really good. Trump steaks are the best one bite, and you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. And believe me, I understand steaks. It's my favorite food. And these are the best. Thank you. God bless you. And God bless the United States of America. Trump steaks. And by the way, if you want to take one, we'll charge you about, what, 50 bucks a steak. Ladies and gentlemen, you read in the New York Times, they had an article that that place is in chaos. The White House is in chaos. They're in a bunker mentality, and people are fighting one another. When I was there, the vice president came out to shake my hand and we talked. Um, Kelly Ann Conway came out to shake my hand and we talked. Ryan Primus, the uh, chief of staff, came out to shake my hand and we talked. Uh, Sean Spicer, the uh, press guy, came out and we talked. And they are, have got it together. The White House is functioning very well. Like a fine-tuned machine. When well, the president is doing incredible things. And the man is just doing remarkably well. Mr. President, thank you so much for being with thank us. You. It's always a joy to see you. Such a great honor. We're thank so you. proud of what you're doing. Thank you very much. Appreciate I'm so glad to see you. I'm so proud of everything you're doing. You went to the G20 and you met for the first time front face to face with Vladimir Putin. What do you think? Can we trust him? I had a great, it was a great G20. Mm -hmm. We had 20 countries. I got along, I think, really fantastically with the head of every country, of every, every country. country. I do believe it's important to have a dialogue, and if you don't have a dialogue, it's a lot of problems for 
our country and for their country. I think we need dialogue. We need dialogue with everybody. Sure. What do you see as the major problem facing the world today? What's the major? Well, we have many problems, yeah. and I was left a very, 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 very uh, tough meal, I will say that. <laughs> it was a mess, a total mess. Yeah. We want to fight. We have to do, we have to change, our, we have to bring our country back. Yeah. Our country was going in the wrong direction. That's right. You couldn't do anything. Our country was going in the wrong direction. But I would have to say, uh, we have to get rid of ISIS. We have to get rid of the terrorists, as you know, better than anybody. <laughs> I'm kidding. Anyhow. And the other is uh, North Korea. We have somebody that is... We will find out what he is. We're going to find out. Two, two, two pieces of legislation the American people are really anxious to see put through. One is this iniquitous Obamacare has got to go and be replaced. Right. Number two, we've got to have a tax cut, especially for small businesses, right. corporate tax. Number uh, one, repeal and replace. Repeal, replace, repeal, replace, repeal and replace. Uh -huh. I am sitting in the Oval Office with a pen in hand waiting for our senators to give it to me. I want you to know there are thousands and thousands of people praying for you all the Thank time you, and so holding nice. you up. The evangelicals were so great to me. You will be saying Merry Christmas again very soon. Well, you, you want to see the horse? You want to pet the horse's nose? Okay, well, you can go see the horse. And ladies and gentlemen, for our family, to your family, we wish you a very Merry Christmas. All right, Barry, go get him, buddy. <laughs> hey, there you go, Harris. Go see the horse. Go see the horse. Well, you want to see the horse. You want to pet the horse. Well, you want to see the horse. You want to pet the horse. Merry Christmas. We're going to bring Christmas back. I love Christmas. I love Christmas. We're going to start saying Merry Christmas again. You'll be saying Merry Christmas again. You want to see the horse. You want to pet the horse. Go we'll see the horse. Go we'll see the horse. Go we'll see the horse. Go we'll pet the horse. He's, He's a war hero because he was captured. I like people that weren't captured, okay? He's a war hero because he was captured. John McCain, we need his We need that vote. I like people that weren't captured. <laughs> be closing in on President Trump just a little bit. I think this presidency is effectively over. Okay, here we go, Donald. And action. Nobody is safe. Everybody is threatened. It is horrible. Cut. Let's move on, Donald. Um, okay, you're the president and you care about the country. As president of the United States, my greatest responsibility is to protect the American people and to ensure their safety. Ah, uh, okay, I don't, I don't really like that, but okay, cross your arms, look tough, look determined, look like a president, now you have your lines here. Uh, sharks will be met with fire and fury, and action. They will be met with fire and fury, like the world has never seen. Try it again, Donald. And as I said, they will be met with fire, fury, and frankly, power the likes of which this world has never seen before. Thank you. Okay, try that last line again. The likes of which we have not seen. Uh, tone it down a bit and let's try it again. Something that uh, nobody's seen anything like. Okay, now uh, we're gonna talk about winning, gonna do it for the kids, action. And we will, we will win. We have no alternative. We have to win for our youth. We have to win for our young people and frankly, we have to win for a lot of other people, not necessarily young. All right, I think we're done here, Donald. We'll call you. Thank you very much. Okay, so uh, let's just imagine you pulled this shark down from the sky and uh, wrestled it to the ground, and you saved the lives of everybody that was on the beach. All right, the smiling is a bit much. You're not ready for this part. I'm sorry. Sorry, Don Jr. Wow. Wow, I love that.
Believe me. We have a divided country. You're fired. And I'm really doing well. I mean, you know, hey. When you see these thugs being thrown into the back of a paddy wagon, rough, I said, please don't be too nice. Like when you guys put somebody in the car and you're protecting their head, I said, you can take the hand away, okay? I will bring people together. I'm going to bring people together. You watch. Thank you. God bless you. And God bless America. It's the summer of Trump. You know, they're calling it the summer of Trump. You're fired. North Korea, best not make any more threats to the United States. They will be met with fire and fury like the world has never seen. He has been very threatening beyond a normal state. And as I said, they will be met with fire, fury, and frankly, power the likes of which this world has never seen before. Thank you. Bye-bye. Hello. Bye. Hello. You are not allowed to be a president if you're not born in this country. He may not have been born in this country. The birth certificate was produced in 2011. You continued to tell the story and question the president's legitimacy in 2012, 13, 14, 15. Yeah. President Barack Obama was born in the United States, period. Okay. Will you unequivocally condemn David Duke and say that you don't want his vote or that of other white supremacists in this election? Well, just so you understand, I don't know anything about David Duke, okay? I don't know anything about what you're even talking about with uh, white supremacy or white supremacists. So, I don't know. I mean, you know, I know nothing about David Duke. Well, you've got David Duke just joined. A bigot, a racist, a problem. I mean, this is not exactly the people you want in your party. Okay, I mean, I'm just talking about David Duke and the Ku Klux Klan here, but... I don't know any... Honestly, I don't know David Duke. A bigot. I don't believe I've ever met him. A racist. I'm pretty sure I didn't meet him, and I just don't know anything about him. A problem. I didn't even know he endorsed me. David Duke endorsed me? Okay. All right. I disavow. Okay? Okay? I think Islam hates us. I think Islam is one of the world's great faiths. Okay. But we're closely following the terrible events unfolding in Charlottesville, Virginia. We condemn in the strongest possible terms this egregious display of hatred, bigotry, and violence on many sides on many sides. It's been going on for a long time in our country. Not Donald Trump. Not Donald, Donald, Donald Trump. 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 It's been going on for a long, long time. President Trump has again been criticized for failing to single out the white nationalists. Thank you. As I said on Saturday, racism is evil on many sides. And those who cause violence in its name are criminals and thugs on many sides, including the KKK neo-Nazis, white supremacists, and other hate groups on many sides that are repugnant. Thank you, God bless you, and God bless America. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I want to thank Senators Tom Cotton and David Perdue for their tremendous work in putting together this historic and very, very, very vital proposal. The RAISE Act, R-A-I-S-E. The RAISE Act, R-A-I-S-E. The RAISE Act, the RAISE Act replaces our low skill system for receiving a green card. This competitive application process will favor applicants who can speak English, very, very, financially support themselves, Trump hotels and casinos, file for bankruptcy protection, four times in six years. It worked out very well for me. And demonstrate skills that will contribute to our economy. Lenders to your company lost over a billion dollars and more than 1,100 people were laid off. Come on.
So cute. So cute. Bye bye. We worship God. Right? We worship God. Who should get this pen? We're going to get some others for you. Donald J. Trump. Each of the apprentices here today operate incredible machines, and some of these machines are wow. so intricate, so powerful. Wow. And, and really, the word is, they are incredible. This is not the old days. This is uh, new and computerized and complicated, and you really have to know what you're doing, they say. You look at the equipment today and just go back 10 years ago and 20 years ago, it's from a different world, from a different planet. It's incredible. God bless you. God bless America. And let's do a really terrific job with the Apprentice Program. Look at this. Wow. Come on, come on, come on. Come here. Come on, come on. Double shot. So cute. Come on. Beautiful. Come on, come here. Hey, when you're a star, they let you do it. Ah, uh, that's right. <laughs> They attracted the beautiful. I just start kissing them. It's like a magnet. Come on, come here. So I heard about this and I wanted to do it myself. So uh, congratulations on behalf of Melania and myself. Hello. Tremendous. Come here. So cute. Come on. my own opinions you can have your own opinions but i want to know your opinions you're the president of the united okay. states it's enough thank you thank you very much i hate it what the hell is going on there's nobody you can call hello i hate it i hate it what the hell is going on? He's a war hero because he was captured. I like people that weren't captured, okay? He's a war hero because he was captured. John McCain, we need his vote. We need that vote. I like people that weren't captured. closing in on President Trump just a little bit. I think this presidency is effectively over. We've had a lot of victories, but we haven't had a victory on health care. Uh, we're disappointed. I am very disappointed because, again, even as a civilian, for seven years I've been hearing about health care. We just let Obamacare fail. Uh, we're not going to own it. I'm not going to own it. I can tell you the Republicans are not going to own it. I've been saying that, Mike, I think you'll agree for a long time. Let Obamacare fail. It'll be a lot easier. When you were with the president of China, China? you were launching these military strikes. When did you tell us? Well, before dessert? I was sitting at the table. We had finished dinner. We're now having dessert. And we had the most beautiful piece of chocolate cake that you've ever seen. And 
I have watched speculation for three days now on what the dessert was like. <laughs> President Xi was enjoying it. And I was given the message from the generals that the ships are locked and loaded and we made a determination to do it. So what happens, as I said, we've just launched 59 missiles heading to Iraq. And we had the most beautiful piece of chocolate cake that you've you headed to Syria? Yes, heading toward Syria. This is during dessert. Chocolate cake dessert. We've just fired 59 missiles. And I, I, what does he do? Finish his dessert and go home. He was okay. He was okay. We've just had the president tweet a gif that I, I want to, you to take a look at. You can see it right there. Obviously, President Trump has taken some video and put a CNN mic logo on who he's beating up on. Can I, can I just get your reaction to that? I'm pretty proud of the president. He's the most genuine president. There's a lot of cable news shows that reach directly into hundreds of thousands of viewers, and they're really not always very fair to the president. Whatever the content of that particular tweet is, or any tweet, he's demonstrated a genuine ability to communicate to the people. Here's what I know about the president. You may not like it, he's got phenomenal instincts. You may not like it, he's got great judgment on people. You may not like it. This man, our president, he has phenomenal instincts. What I love about the president, he's a remarkably loyal guy. White House Communications Director, Anthony Scaramucci, has been fired. Bye-bye. Well, who was only appointed 10 days ago by President Trump. I said bye-bye. It's so sad, okay? Bye-bye. Bye-bye. That's the president. This administration is running like a fine-tuned machine. Bye-bye. Phenomenal instincts. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. He's a remarkably loyal guy. It's so sad. You're fired. Yeah, I've seen this guy at Madison Square Garden. He's standing in the key and he's hitting foul shots and squishing them. You're fired. Thank you, everybody, for being here. We appreciate it. Maybe I'll ask Rudy to say a few words. Well, Where thanks, Rudy. Thank you very, very Rudy. much, Mr. President. First Rudy. of all, congratulations on what is, in fact, a historic uh, start of an administration. I've never seen so much done in so short a period of time. <laughs> than ever. I was in the early part of the Reagan administration. Well, well thank you very much, Rudy. I appreciate it, and I know you're going to do a great job. Keith, do you think the president tells the truth? I don't think he intentionally lies. I think he sometimes um, has trouble with facts. <laughs> Even if the Paris Agreement were implemented in full, it would only produce a two-tenths of one degree. Think of that. This much. Celsius reduction by the year 2100. Tiny, tiny amount. Uh, if you could hear us. Uh, w yes, I can hear you fine, Neil. Very good to have you, sir. You know, there is some concern expressed in the global community that we just alienated ourselves. What do you say? Well, talking about warming temperatures, the studies from MIT showed that if we did everything in this Paris Agreement, it would only change the d temperature by the year 2000, by two tenths of one degree. Wilbur, do you think that the, the, Wilbur, pride, lower the, the rise microphone. we've had in do it now, temperature Wilbur. since then uh, owes any connection to man? Well, it may. I'm, I'm not a scientist. We put America first when it comes to trade. We put American jobs and American workers first. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, everybody. You're going to see some very, very strong results very, very quickly. Thank you very much. Thank you.
Wow. Wow, I love that. I'm very glad to be part of this, and I really want to commend the president for having the boldness and the uh, leadership and the foresight to get this done. And I'd like to introduce the vice president of the United States. Well, good morning. Uh, it's an honor to share this moment with you today, a moment where President Trump will take a critical step to lower the... How are you? Nice to see you. Thank you all very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Come on. So clear. Thank you, everybody. Welcome to the very first edition of Huckabee, and our first guest, who is also our president, is Donald Trump. Wow. We sat down with the president in the Roosevelt Room at the White House. Wow. You've had a tough week. Going to Las Vegas this week to deal with the most horrific kind of... Yes. Uh, just a total mess. A big one. Just a, a death sentence. It's pretty sad. Just a horrible crime that's killed 59 people. And so many of them support what I do. They support me from the evangelical Christian standpoint. They support me from so many different now. I was so honored. When you were there yesterday, a young man who had been shot in the leg, Z he went to his hospital room with the First Lady, and he stood despite the leg wound, and he said, I always stand for my president. That's right. He and others, I have to say, because there's great respect for the office and everybody agrees. We did a great job and we weren't treated fairly by the media because we really did a good job. That's what I do, I do a good job. Two young women, one hit in the back, in the back right here, and she supports what I do. And it was very nice to see. But we had that from everybody, the hospital, the hospital workers. It was incredible to see. So in one sense, you hate to see it. In another sense, it makes you feel good. They support me. It was incredible to see people that were just for no reason were, you know, shot through the back, shot on the forehead. Shot. They were so happy to see both of us, but they were so happy to see her. The first lady. Yeah, the first lady. She is very popular. I'll yes, tell she you. Is. And honestly, she loved her other life. You know, yeah. her other life was a good life. She was leading a very nice life, believe me. And and she's a very good person, and she does like to, you know, be adored by people. Uh, we're doing so well in so many ways, and nobody talks about it. I'll give you an example. The people of Puerto Rico, they got it, and they really, I mean, you saw the love. There was love in Puerto Rico for the fact that I went there. So I was making a speech, and women are holding up, we love you. And people don't want to talk about it. The media doesn't want to talk about it. You have been called on time and time again. Hurricane Irma, Hurricane Maria. Hurricanes are very big and they're very, very, very nasty and they're very costly. There was so much uh, effusive praise for your visit to Puerto Rico by the governor, by most of those mayors who said, we've never seen this level of response. Your response was pitch perfect. First of all, we started with Texas and Louisiana. Don't forget, Louisiana got hit hard. And I went to Texas and I went to Louisiana. Thank you, everybody. What a crowd, what a turnout. And I think it helped. And we got very high marks. We got A pluses. We got really high marks on Florida, Louisiana, Texas. And I think I did at least as well on Puerto Rico. I went to Puerto Rico. The governor is a terrific guy who was praising the job we've done. Almost every mayor 
I think there's over 70, were praising us. The Congresswoman, who's terrific, she has been incredible in her praise of the job we've done. And we visited various homes and people that got hurt, and they were praising us. We're going to help you out. Thank you. Have a good time. Have a good time. It's been really nice. It's been a, it's been a wonderful thing. So we did a great job. We are doing really well because we really did a good job. I mean, one example, they had these beautiful soft towels, very good towels. And I came in and there was a crowd of a lot of people and they were screaming and they were loving everything. And we were, I was having fun, they were having fun, they were having fun, I was having fun. They said, throw them to me, throw them to me, Mr. Cook. And also when they had, when I walked in, the cheering was incredible. The cheering was, it was deafening. I'm here, it's, it's sort of amazing. So I'm here and I sometimes ask myself, how did I ever get here? to understand who Donald Trump the man is from a human standpoint. So it's all coming together. It's all coming together. So to be clear, Mr. Trump has no financial relationships with any Russian oligarchs. That, that's what he said. I, I, that's what I said. That's obviously what the, the, our position is. It's all coming together. We want Americans to understand who Donald Trump the man is. You know, the composite of his career, not just from a business standpoint or a political standpoint, but from a human standpoint as well. It's all coming together. Do I have relationships that go back into the system? Yes. Some of those relationships see me as a bridge to Trump now. Wow. They want to be for Trump. They didn't have a way in. Not talking to me. They have a way in. Russia, if you're listening. Now they have a way in. Russia. They have a way in. Some of those relationships see me as a bridge to Trump. Donald Trump is running this campaign. And, uh, and I'm working directly for Donald Trump. Bye-bye. The President of the United States and Mrs. Trump, accompanied by Baron Trump. Stop it. Stop it. Well, thank you all for being here and welcome to the White House. Very special place. A very happy and blessed place. And I hear that beautiful turkey. We are here today to continue a wonderful American tradition. Today, in the spirit of Thanksgiving, I will grant a presidential pardon to a turkey. I'm especially pleased that we're joined for this great occasion by Drumstick. Drumstick. And Wishbone. Now I think Drumstick, I Drumstick, and Wishbone would be very thankful if we would just get around to the pardon. They say, enough talk, please pardon us. Many of you are always, and you know your loved ones, and you're far away, and you spend so much time away. Today, I'm going to be a much nicer president. Before we get to the pardon, I would like to take a moment to extend our very heartfelt special message. Thanks. Thanks, folks. Thank you. Drumstick, you are hereby pardoned. Okay. Okay. I was only kidding. Thank you. Stop it. Jerusalem. Jerusalem is today and must remain a place where Jews pray and where Muslims worship at Al-Aqsa Mosque and where Christians walk 
the Stations of the Cross. Therefore, I have determined that it is time to officially recognize Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. Let us rethink old assumptions and open our hearts and minds to possible and possibilities. Thank you, and God bless the United States. Thank you very much. I also want to make one point very clear. We're saying Merry Christmas again. I told you that we would be saying Merry Christmas again, right? If I become president, we're all going to be saying Merry Christmas again. That I can tell you. That I can tell you. Did you read about Starbucks? No more Merry Christmas on Starbucks. No more. Maybe we should boycott Starbucks. I don't know. Seriously. I don't care. Who cares? Who cares? Who cares? I grew up my Bible. I believe in God. I believe in the Bible. I'm a Christian. I'm, I, you know, I have a lot of reasons. I love, I love people. I love Christmas. I love Christmas. You go to stores now, you don't see the word Christmas. It says happy holidays all over. I say, where's Christmas? Merry Christmas. Remember the expression, Merry Christmas? You don't see it anymore. You're going to see it if I get elected. I can tell you right now. Hello, Christmas. Hello, Christmas. On the 25th, Santa comes. Hello. We open the presents and spending time together. Hello. I ask Santa for Christmas, uh, peace on the world, health, love, and kindness. Hello. Christmas. Hello. Peace on the world, health, love, and kindness. Peace on the world, health, love, and kindness. Peace on the world, health, love, and kindness. You're fired. Merry Christmas, everybody. Happy New Year. Happy Holidays. Merry Christmas. Because you, you obviously are very offended by the notion that this book, Fire and Fury, paints a picture of President Trump is not mentally up to the job. He said, quote, Actually, throughout my life, my two greatest assets have been mental stability and being, like, really smart. I went from very successful businessman to top TV star to president of the United States on my first try. I think that would qualify as not smart, but genius, and a very stable genius at that. So one of the tragedies of this grotesque work of fiction is its portrayal of the president. That the, um, you know, on the campaign, I had the chance to travel all across the country on uh, Trump Force One. We're even. It, the, be the president, even. me, Dan Scavino, Hope Hicks, a few other people. Stephen, I'm trying to get to the issue of the president's accounting. fitness, which a lot of people well, are I'm getting to the issue of the president's tweets absolutely reaffirm the plain spoken truth. The president's a genius. It's what I've seen with him traveling to meet dozens of foreign leaders, with his incredible work. Okay, you're not answering the questions. No, I understand. I get it. Time. There's one viewer that you care about right now, and you're being obsequious. No, you're being which, a factotum no, in order being, to please him. Okay. No, I travel with Donald Trump all across the country and the world. Stephen, I would, I would be with the president. Stephen, on a campaign plane. You've already said that. We let you say that. At if the time. you want to have an answer to your question and not to get hysterical, then I'll answer it. The president is a genius, a self-made billionaire who revolutionized reality TV and, and who has sure changed the course of our politics. He's watching and he's happy that you said that. But, but you know, Jay, you can be no, no, you can be condescending. And that was a snide remark. You're sure he's watching and he's happy. Let me tell you something. Donald Trump is a genius. You know, people don't understand. I went to an Ivy League college. Uh, I was a nice student. I did very well. Uh, I'm a very intelligent person. I didn't. And I was a good student. I understand things. I comprehend very well. I'm really smart, okay? Genius. Better than, I think, almost anybody. I'm really smart. You could be a lawyer, or you don't have to be a lawyer. If you were a good student in high school or a bad student in high school, you can understand this. I'm really smart. Again, a bad high school student would understand. I'm really smart. Trust me. I'm like a smart person. An academic genius. Genius. I'm probably more intelligent than Hillary. Because I have a very good brain. I'm really smart. I know words. I have the best words. You know, I'm like a smart person. I'm smart. Steve Bannon called it 
treasonous and unpatriotic. And he said that, quote, the chance that Don Jr. did not walk these Jamos up to his father's office on the 26th floor is zero. Did President Trump meet with any of the so-called Jamos? It's tragic and unfortunate that Steve would make these grotesque comments, which were grotesque. Um, so grotesque. You know, on the campaign, I had the chance to travel all across the country with the president. Answer the question. And I saw a man who was a political genius. Just to answer the question. The reality is, is that the president is a political genius. Just answer the question. The, um, answer the question. Why don't you just give me three minutes to tell you the truth about Donald Trump that I know? Because it's my show and I don't want to do that. So well, the, this here's, isn't, my, here's this isn't, my question. No, but this here's, isn't, this isn't Steven, a courtroom and I Steven, have a right to settle speak. down. Settle down. Calm Look, down. Jake. Settle down. The president is settle a down. genius. Calm Look, down. Settle down. The president is a genius. But the president's the president's a genius. A genius. Calm down. The president is now calling Bannon, quote, sloppy Steve. And he released a scathing statement this week saying in part, quote, Steve Bannon Sloppy Steve. has nothing to do with me or my presidency. When he was fired, he not only lost his job, he lost his mind. I think the American people deserve to have the truth. And we've let you, and we've no, let you no, talk. No, oh. here's the truth. I travel with Donald Trump all across the country and the world. You know, I, I, wasted, I, care I think about, I've wasted enough of my you viewers' who time. I, you know who Thank I you, care Stephen. about? As Republicans, hey, Jake, lawmakers call you know for Attorney I General Jeff Sessions to resign. The president's In a major genius. reversal, Democrats are now coming to his defense. What changed? We'll ask the top Democrat on the House Intelligence Committee next. Wow. Wow, I love that. I am so excited tonight for the State of the Union. Tune in at nine. <laughs> I have the high privilege and the distinct honor of, pre of, of presenting to you the President of the United States. First Lady of the United States. Hello. Melania. I want you to know that 320 million hearts are right now breaking for you. Thank you. In America, we know that faith and family, not government and bureaucracy, are the center of American life. The motto is, In God We Trust. 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 Past experience has taught us that complacency and concessions only invite aggression and provocation. We must get much tougher on illegal aliens. They should be treated like the terrorists they are. Now let's get Congress to send you Melania, we have sent thousands and thousands and thousands of spouses that came in illegally out of this country or into our prisons. So I just want to talk about what kind of future we're going to have, Melania. You're fired. God. Bye bye. To come here and stay here, you have to come in to the country with it.
Bye. Good evening. Thanks for joining us tonight. My conversation with Melania Trump. Until today, she's not spoken on camera about the video of him and Billy Bush on that bus uh, 11 years ago and his remarks about grabbing women and being allowed to allowed to do that because he's famous. You know, I'm automatically attracted to beautiful. I just start kissing them. It's like a magnet. And when you're a star, you can do anything. Grab them by the person. No. My husband is real. He's raw. He tells it as it is. He's kind, he's a gentleman. When you, when you came down that escalator. He's kind, he's a gentleman, he's an adult. He supports women, he, he encouraged them, he encourages them to, to, he encouraged them to. I gotta use some Tic Tacs just in case I start kissing her. Well, he's sort of get away with things like that. My husband is kind and he's a gentleman. Your husband said that he described it as, as locker room talk. Mm -hmm. Well, is that what it is to you? Just locker room talk? Yes. 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 No. Just locker room talk? Yeah, it's, it's kind of uh, two teenage boys. He's in that age and all the boys are in that age. That, yeah, they say some bad words and it's very normal. Actually, they should behave better. Right? 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 It he was, was 59. Not... <laughs> but, um, Grab him by the pussy. A boy talk. Grab him by the pussy. They, they were kind of a, a boy talk. Oh, nice legs, huh? He was lead on, like egg on, from uh, the host. You feel the host, Billy Bush, was sort of egging him on? Yes. Yes. Billy Bush. Yes. Billy Bush. Yes. 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 Grab him by the pussy. Push. So a number of women have come forward. They've made allegations against your husband. Some of them go back more than 30 years. He has said they're lying. Do you believe him? Do you believe him? I believe my husband. I believe my husband. I'm a very honest person. I'm a very honest person. Honestly, I'm a very honest person. He tells it as it is. Just start kissing them. It's like a magnet. Just cut them away. You can do anything. Grab them by the pussy. He tells it as it is. Well, we'll have to see what happens, you know? I'm not bad at doing things. If I had a relationship with Putin, I don't know him. Uh, I met him twice, maybe three times, two and a half times. Two and a half times, two and a half times, two and a half times. I do have a relationship. We just left Moscow. He could not have been nicer. Two and a half, two and a half, and a half. He was so nice and so everything. And it's an honor to be with you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I'm not bad at doing things. Two and a half. Wow. Wow. Would you now, with the whole world watching, tell President Putin, would you denounce what happened in 2016, and would you warn him to never do it again? We get questions on the witch hunt, and I don't think the people out in the in the country buy it. But the reporters like to give it a shot. I thought that President Putin was very, very strong. President Putin was extremely strong and powerful. In his denial today, my people came to me, said they think it's Russia. Uh, I have uh, President Putin. Uh, he just said it's not Russia. I will say this. I don't see any reason why it would be. I don't see any reason why it would be. I don't see any reason why it would be. So I have great confidence in my intelligence people, but, uh, 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 to say, I came back 
And I said, what is going on? What's the big deal? What's the big deal? So I got a transcript. I reviewed it. I actually went out and uh, reviewed a clip of uh, an answer that I gave. And I realized that there is a need for some clarification. It should have been obvious. I thought it would be obvious. But I would like to clarify just in case it wasn't. In a key sentence in my remarks, I said the word would instead of wouldn't. The sentence should have been, I don't see any reason why I wouldn't or why it wouldn't be Russian. So just to repeat it, I said the word would instead of wouldn't. And the sentence should have been, and I thought it would be maybe a little bit unclear on the transcript or unclear on the actual video. The sentence should have been, I don't see any reason why it wouldn't be Russia. Sort of a double negative. Sort of a double negative. Melania, here you go. I have a full faith in our intelligence agencies. Whoops, they just turned off the lights. Okay. You guys okay? Good. Uh, we have some of our great business leaders and leaders, period, right behind me. Uh, I may ask Marilyn Lockheed, uh, the leading woman's business executive in this country, according to many. And uh, we buy billions and billions of dollars worth of that beautiful F-35. It's stealth. You cannot see it. Is that correct? Better be correct, right? particularly the F-35 fighter jet, which is, you know, almost like an invisible fighter. Bye! I was asking the Air Force guys, I said, how good is this plane? They said, well, sir, you can't see it. I said, yeah, but in a fight, you know, a fight like I watch on the movies, the fight, they're fighting. How good is it? They say, well, it wins every time because the enemy cannot see it. Even if it's right next to it, it can't see it. Ding, ding, ding. That's a good thing. But, I mean, we have equipment that nobody has the equipment that we have. Nobody has the equipment that we have. So amazing that we're ordering hundreds of millions of dollars worth of new airplanes. Bye-bye. Especially the F-35. Do you like the F-35? I said, how does it do it in fights? And how do they do in fights with the F-35? I said, we do very well. You can't see it. You literally, you can't see it. So it's hard to fight a plane that you can't see, right? But that's an expensive plane that you can't see. That's an expensive plane that you can't see. That's an expensive plane that you can't see. Hello. The F-35 aircraft, that's the most sophisticated aircraft in the world, jet fighters. Bye -bye. Total stealth. They're hard to find. They're hard to see. Therefore, they're hard to beat. It's very tough to beat a plane when you can't see it. Marilyn Lockheed. Thank you, Marilyn. You've done a fantastic job. Thank you, Marilyn. Hey, Fred, she makes a plane you can't see. It's stealth. F-35. I hope you can't see it at least, right? Great job. Thank you very much. They are great. They are great people. They're my friends. Thank you very much. I love you, too. Guy. It's a guy, but I love you, too. I'm Levi Tilliman. Washington needs more doers and innovators. That's why I'm running for U.S. Congress. I'm calling on Congress to stop talking past each other and try something new. Empower schools and teachers with non-lethal self-defense tools like this can of pepper spray. It's powerful and won't accidentally kill a kid. Trust me, this will stop anyone in their tracks.
kind of weird. Oh. And now I just can't see anything. I still can barely see anything. I just see white. I see white. Wow. 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 I just see white. I see white. Oh my god. Washington needs more doers. And innovators. Washington needs more doers and innovators. I still can barely see anything.
Difficult times like these, I just want you to know that I am here for you. No matter how difficult, no matter how hard, I want you to know that deep inside of you, you have a resource that can help pull you through. It's called your sense of humor. All you have to do is reach down deep inside and find it. And before you know, your inner clown will emerge, and your day will always be much better. So, <laughs> have a squeak on me. <laughs> See you next time. Bye. <sighs> Top seven answers on the board. <sighs> Steve Harvey is one of the blankest guys around. Tallest. Tallest. Best looking. Just say it one more time. Best looking. God, I wanted that to be okay. Please, God, if you don't do nothing else, let me be good looking before I die. Now, it is my pleasure to call my husband to the stage to sign a proclamation calling today, May 7th, Be Best Day. Mr. President? <laughs> Guy, it's a guy, but I love you too. Well, your father Herman is looking down. He's very proud of you right oh, he's now. He's still alive. He's huh? oh, he's
but you are great people. Would you like to take a picture in the Oval Office? I assume you've all been many times into the Oval Office. Let's go and do that. Let's go and do that. Yes, I'm going to do it. We'll go into the Oval Office. We're going to sign this up. We'll go into the Oval Office. We'll have a picture, okay? Okay, thank you. Enough time, right? You've been waiting for a long yes, sir. time. Yes, sir. Here you go. Let's pass it. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. Well, we'll have to see what happens, you know? I'm not bad at doing things. If I had a relationship with Putin, I don't know him. I met him twice, maybe three times, two and a half times. Two and a half times, two and a half times, two and a half times. I do have a relationship. We just left Moscow. He could not have been nicer. Two and a half, two and a half, and a half. He was so nice and so everything. And it's an honor to be with you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I'm not bad at doing things. Wow. Wow. If the president puts Russian salad dressing on his salad tonight, somehow that's a Russian connection. Someone as despicable as Hitler, who didn't even sink to the to the to using chemical weapons. Uh, thank you guys for coming. I know our fish our fish first official press briefing is gonna be on Monday, but <laughs> joining me now, former White House Press Secretary Sean Spicer. Good to see you. Thank you for that. Isn't uh, it fun reading all of this? <laughs> what, 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 what do you I wanna know what your gut feels like every time you watch that again? Depends on which clip. Uh, <laughs> uh, but it takes one one set of clips like that to remind me uh, that um, uh, <laughs> Depends which clip. Depends which clip. Depends which clip. Depends which clip. Bye. You know, I really believe you don't know until you test it. But I think I, I really believe I'd run in there even if I didn't have a weapon. I'd run in there even if I didn't have a weapon. I really believe I'd run in there even if I didn't have a weapon. I really believe I'd run in there even if I didn't have a weapon. Go back home to the mommy. Go, go back home. Go back home. Great. I'd run in there even if I didn't have a weapon. I want you to remember this week to pray for the president. Somebody give God praise! Oh, come on, praise him! I'm coming to you as a prophet. As a man of God, and I'm telling you, it's time to pray for the president. We pray for his children. Oh my God. I heard the Lord say, there's going to be an attempt to take him out of power. Let's stand and pray right now. Come on, everybody, lift your voice. Help me pray. We got to pray for this man. Amando. Come on, cry out to the Lord. We lift him up, Lord. Make him strong. Keep him, Lord, with your keeping power. Preserve him.
before the election, a friend of mine had a dream. And in the dream, everyone was in the White House waiting to see the results. Who's going to win, Hillary Clinton or Donald Trump? Mm -hmm. Walked in one room, Hillary's in that room just watching TV waiting. Walked in another room in the White House, Donald Trump is there. He's reading his Bible and he's weeping. So he's sitting there weeping and I, and I felt then, this was a couple weeks before, I felt like he is going to win this. Even though it doesn't seem possible, he's going to win this. God's using him. Mm -hmm. But I believe he, he wants to make him a father in this nation, for this nation, to this nation. If somebody has problems with demon possession, where are they going to get help? At CNN? CNN, fake. Where are they going to get help? In the mental institution? It ought to be in the house of God. I don't know if you know this. Hey. I don't know if you don't believe me when I tell you. Hey! Hey! But what's happening hey. right now in America is witchcraft trying to take this country. Hey! Hey! Here's what the Holy Spirit said to me last night, and here's what he said to me to tell you. He said, tell the church that so far Trump has been dealing with Ahab. Hey! But Jezebel's fixing to step out from the shadows. Hey! Hey! That's what the Lord said to me. Hey! Wow. Wow. I love that.